So this review is on Norman Rockwell, 332 magazine covers. And so there are tons of books on Rockwell's art, but I absolutely consider this one to be the best without any real competition. It is a monstrous book, um, and the price definitely reflects that, but I promise it is worth every penny. The problem with a lot of the other books on Norman Rockwell's art is that they're too small in their selection, too unfocused in the curation, and never really useful to the sort of um, Rockwell completist. And it's like, how many times can I see the triple self-portrait, you know? It's almost like too many of them are vying to be the best of, rather than looking at what other Rockwell books have done and trying to complement that. So it can be really hard if you're a fan of Rockwell's art to get a sort of complete catalog of his works in book form and there actually is a two volume collection sort of like encyclopedic catalog of every piece of art by Norman Rockwell but the problem with that is it's all in black and white so again not really that useful for going through and looking at it's more just I guess for reference and so what I really like about this book is that it is really focused it collects all of his Saturday evening post covers which I consider to be Norman Rockwell's best work, um, and a few other magazine covers. Really nice, big quality images. The reproductions are really good. Whenever you get an art book on Norman Rockwell, it's always kind of a bit of a gamble as to um, how the quality of the reproductions is going to be like. But this one um, sometimes isn't 100% perfect every time, but by and large, it's all really, really good reproductions of his art. The quality of the materials of the book itself, also pages, dust jacket, all that really high quality, definitely helps you feel like you're getting your money's worth. I'm a huge fan of Golden Age illustration, and Norman Rockwell is obviously one of, if not the best. I think nowadays a lot of people are kind of um, critical of Rockwell and some of those other Golden Age illustrators, especially those working on, you know, these sort of lifestyle magazine paintings, interior illustrations, etc. Just because they kind of present that sort of eye-rolling quaintness to them, that sort of, and a very sort of, um, saluting the flag, Americana flair, and that tied into the fact that, you know, these were commercial illustrations, you know, there, there was art being produced to make money. And so I guess those things have made people sort of, um, poo-poo, artists like Norman Rockwell. But personally, I just love that sort of art, and Norman Rockwell is probably my favorite. The thing I love most about Rockwell's art in particular is not only is it just completely charming um, and has just this wonderful, gentle sense of humor, especially in the expressions of his characters. They're just so great. He used photographic reference of, you know, real people for his um, illustrations. And there's actually a book you can get on that called, I think something like um, Rock, Norman Rockwell Behind the Camera, which shows the original photos he took alongside the final um, painting. So you can see how it was used, which is actually a pretty cool idea for a book especially if you're an artist and you want to get more of an idea into Rockwell's process of how he captured his images. But the reason I've avoided getting that book, even though I think it's a cool idea, is that, to me personally, it kind of takes away from the magic of his illustration a little bit. But yeah, it just has this wonderful, quaint sense of humor to it. But beyond that, I think he is just a master at capturing a scene and capturing a story in a single frame and doing that in a really simple way usually it's just you know one or two figures in his art um, you know there's no background lavish set pieces cast of thousands that sort of thing it's always very simple so expressive to wonderful storyteller and speaking of which two of Norman Rockwell's biggest fans are Steven Spielberg and George Lucas, and they have a huge collection of his original art. And they actually did an exhibit some years ago, and there was also a, a book that came out to coincide with that, sort of like, a, like the exhibit catalogue, that was quite a big book called, I think, Norman Rockwell Storyteller. I haven't actually seen inside that one, so I'm not sure what's included or how it compares 
whenever you get a book that's a monograph on an artist, you always run that risk of, like, even though you may really like the artist and their style and, you know, the bulk of their work, there's always that risk that it's going to be, the book is going to be padded out with a lot of stuff you maybe don't like. And so then you're buying a whole book just because you like, you know, maybe half the pictures, maybe a bit more, maybe a bit less. Or maybe after going through a whole book, you start getting tired of their art. But I just have not, I've gone through this book so many times and never had that feeling. Norman Rockwell, to me, is just so consistently, his images are just so consistently entertaining. And this book has such a great selection. I couldn't even pick, like, a, a top ten from this book. It would be so much easier for me to pick, you know, maybe the... 10 images that I'm not really a fan of. The rest is just so great. And one thing that a lot of books on Rockwell's art do is that they also have a lot of accompanying text, usually um, essays by, you know, scholars or artists uh, on topics of American society, things like that. And to be honest, I just really don't care about that sort of stuff. I'm sure it's interesting, but if I'm buying a Norman Rockwell art book, it's because I want to see Norman Rockwell's art not read some punter's essay. And so that's another thing that I really like about this book is that it's just focusing on the art. As you can see, every page, it's just a, a really nice, huge, full page reproduction of the art. And then down the bottom, you've got like the name of the piece, the date, um, the magazine it appeared on the cover of or inside which is helpful for reference reasons and so beyond that there's not really any other text there's sort of like an introduction at the start which is fine but then one thing that's really weird is they also have um at the back of the book thumbnail size black and white reproductions of each of the images with a sort of um annotation and the annotations are really good but i just think it was kind of dumb that these are all put at the back rather than you know down the bottom with the actual artwork on the page i would have much preferred but I'll show you those when we get towards the back. I just love going through this book. It's such a great escape. I find it so, you know, it's funny, it's wholesome. And maybe it is a rose-tinted depiction of America that, you know, maybe never even existed. But it just has such great warmth and makes you feel good, happy, and nostalgic. And nostalgic for a time period I never lived in, in a country I never lived in. And the other thing that's really great about this book is that the covers go chronologically. So you get to see a sense of not only Norman Rockwell's progression as an artist, but also... Um, what was important in America at the time, the evolution, what was America like in the 1930s, in the 1940s, in the 1950s, 60s. Now, if you are interested in this book, one thing I have to very strongly warn you about if you're going to buy it online is that there is also a miniature edition of this book. And by miniature, I don't mean like abridged, less pages. I mean like smaller format. And I've had a look through this one and it is just ridiculous. It is so tiny and largely pointless so when you're buying it online you really have to try and make sure you're getting this edition and not the miniature one because sometimes it's very hard to tell uh, which one they're selling so if you think you're actually finding one online that's for you know a real bargain just be um, <laughs> very sure you're not getting the miniature edition so if you only get one book on norman rockwell's art this is absolutely the one to get. And don't be put off by the high price point, the reproduction quality, the quality of the book itself, the selection of images. It gives it this real um, feeling of completeness in a sense. I only wish they had have done like a second volume, a companion volume of some of his other work. But anyway, if you are a fan of Rockwell's art, this is definitely the book I would give my highest recommendation. And so as we get to the back, you can see it's got this section of annotations for each of the pieces written by Christopher Finch. And it's actually a pretty good commentary. It's very short, but it's not belaboring the point. It just sort of gives some sort of context for each picture, which is really nice. And I think this edition that I have here is the uh, second printing. I think in the first, these thumbnails were all in black and white. So it's really good that they decided to put these in color. And just looking at it now, maybe it was a good idea that they didn't have the text sort of clogging up the page and kept the main pages really clean, but um, means you have to sort of flip back if you want to learn about anything. 
but you know, whatever the case, I'm just really glad that they um, did include these small annotations.